Hmm. Hi, everyone. We have Coach Forbes with us. We will start with an opening statement and go to questions. Yeah, um, I thought defensively we were really good tonight again for 40 minutes. Um, when we got the rebound, we really got out in transition. Um, you know, we were 21 to three in transition. So for the last two games, we're like, I don't know, 53 or 51 to five in transition. You're going to win a lot of games that way. Uh, defensively, I thought our bigs were outstanding the entire game uh, in the ice. They, um, we were a little bit more of a drop coverage to start the game. And then we went aggressively in the second half. They poked the ball away. They did some great things in the ice. I thought Dallas was outstanding. Dream fouled out, but he played really hard. Matthew gave us good minutes. Jake played well in the, in the, in the ball screen. We had 19 assists on 29 baskets, so we're sharing the ball. Five guys in double figures. Um, I thought we, we didn't turn it over as much in the second half. It really kind of blew the game open. Uh, I thought early on, I thought their uh, physicality bothered us. I didn't think we played through contact very well credit to them. Uh, they're a hard playing team. I knew they'd have, you know, that type of identity coming into the game because Earl and I both coached with Greg Marshall and that's the way he is defensively. And so um, I didn't think we handled that well uh, early. And then I thought we settled in, but you know, 53% from the field, 40 from three, 91 from the field, you're going to win a lot of game or free throw line. You're going to win most of your games that way. And so uh, coming out of a, an emotional win on Saturday, um, late game. I, I was proud of the way we played tonight. Questions? Yeah, Steve, just, just on the matter of coming off of Saturday's emotional game, uh, were you were you happy with the way things picked up in the first half after about the first five minutes? Yeah, yeah, Connor. You know, um, we didn't get off to a great start. Uh, it was sluggish. I thought I didn't think we were making them miss. I thought they missed some easy, some couple of layups there they could have had. Um, but we settled in and um, really started to grind away. And it was one of those kind of games. It wasn't going to be pretty because of the way they play. And they're physical and they're tough. And so we had to fight through that. And I give our guys a lot of credit. It wasn't a totally opposite type of game than it was against Carolina. And uh, they loaded up to the box. They loaded up to the ball you know, on Alondis and Jake. That's fine. You know, and, and that's why we got – other guys that can score and not that they did it, but you know, to have that many guys on the floor that can make baskets, it's hard to guard us. Steve, I noticed uh, you guys, your versatility, really all five starters can hit the three pointer. Not that you want them all shooting three pointers, but <laughs> how much does that versatility really pay off? Especially when teams try to try to pressure you like that and you just kind of dribble off it. Yeah. It eases the pressure, you know, and it puts everybody on the scouting report that they have to guard them out there. You know, that's an important thing. And so it spreads, the, it, it spreads the court and gives us more opportunities to drive. You know, again, you know, a, a critical thing on my team. I, I still think we have to do a better job exchanging away from the ball. We, st we tend to stand a little bit away from the ball. Constant movement confuses the defense, and it helps us on the roll, too, with the big men. And so we got to continue to progress in that area. You know, we got a lot of room to improve still. And we're only at halftime. And I mean that we're only at halftime because it's it's halftime of the league. We still got 10 games to go. And so uh, there's a lot left to be played for. But it is a, it is a, a definite advantage to have guys, a, a multiple guys on the team that can make shots. At halftime of league play, though, Steve, you guys have won by 22 and 30 in the last two games. Last year, I don't even think you won an ACC game by more than a dozen. How is it surprising at all that your team is capable at this point, given the amount of turnover, to win games in this league by this manner? I don't think so. I mean, Josh, I mean, that's why you play the non-league, to get a feel for your, your team. And then what? Well, when we opened up at Virginia Tech, you know, with that type of win on the road, I, I felt pretty good about our team. You know, not that I wouldn't have if we lost. I mean, it's a lot. I mean, it's, 19 more games, but um, I think we got a good team and I think we got good players and I think they have great chemistry. They're tough. They believe in each other. And so, um, yeah, you know, but they don't hand out any awards. They don't hand out any banners at halftime, you know, and so um, we got a lot left on the table. 
we got to take a little time off now. We've had a, a good run here of some games. And I want to thank Boston College, you know, for rescheduling the game with the league, working hand in hand on that. Um, you know, they had to agree to it and they got a tough, they got to go to Carolina. I think they play there Wednesday. So I give them a lot of credit for, um, you know, getting this game played because uh, it's important to play games right now. And uh, hats off to them. Steve, it seemed you did have some frustration in the first half about not getting a handful of defensive rebounds and giving them second yeah. chances. And that seems yeah. to be something that kind of carried over from the UNC game. What's going on there and what do you need to do to attack that? I think we got to do a better job of, first of all, going to get it with two hands if you're not going to block out. Some of these guys need to be blocking out, and they're not. And it's not the big guys, it's the perimeter players. Uh, Dallas is, is great at boxing this guy out. Jay does a pretty good job. Some of those guys are relying on their athleticism to try to go get it, and they're getting the ball knocked out of their hands. So I think they got to be stronger with the ball. Um, I think our guards got to rebound down better and possess those 50-50 balls. Uh, we got our hands on a lot of them. We just don't get. Now, you know, we play two teams and that's their best offense. We can sit here and talk about it, but they shot 25% from the field. And Carolina shot 33% from the field. And so there's going to be a lot of those opportunities when you're not making those either. And so, um, you know, it's a fine line. But, no, I'm not happy about it. And, uh, you know, that's part of, of my, you know, how, what I believe is rebounding the ball with two hands and, being tough. And I, I think we miss out on some of those. Steve, what was it like littering the campus the other night and throwing that toilet paper all over the quad? Well, I tore my rotator cuff. Um, you know, I was a pitcher in college. Uh, it's been a while since I'd thrown BP. Um, actually, to be honest with you, my first attempt was very inept. I was very disappointed. Uh, barely got it to the tree. Had to get a little closer on the second toss. I got somebody else's roll of toilet paper. I want to thank Lawrence Joel Memorial Coliseum for supplying me with the toilet paper. And um, on the second one, I, I did good. I did good. But, I, you know, I really enjoyed it. I've been waiting to do that um, on the right game, to be out there with the students. That's a tremendous tradition. Um, where I'm from, you just do that at Halloween, then you get in trouble. Um, but uh, at least you get to do it here and you don't get in trouble. And so um, I had a great time. It was fun. Something I won't, I'll never forget. For clarification, you didn't tear your rotator cuff Saturday night, right? No, 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 John. That's, you know, tongue in cheek. You ever heard that? You know, you know, um, no, I'm a little tougher than that. And um, I actually was a pretty good pitcher in college. So, you know, it's been a while. It's been a while. Steve, with the, with the, mon with the early Monday game and then not playing until Saturday, what does the rest of the schedule look like this week for you? Yeah, well, that's a great question. You know, uh, tomorrow we're off. We got, we need a day off. And um, so I don't want them. They'll come in and check in the office like they typically do. They got to check in every Monday through Friday at one from at before one o'clock and they'll come see us, but we won't do any film or any basketball. And then uh, Tuesday, well, that's Tuesday, Wednesday, um, I'm going to go recruit and uh, we'll just do some um, skill instruction and uh, dummy offense, just, you know, going over some things we need to go over, not go live. And then we always put the scout in 48 hours before the game. So it's Thursday, Friday, we'll prep for Syracuse. And then we'll go to Syracuse Friday and get ready to play on Saturday. So it's, it's going to be a good week. We need it. You know, that was the hard thing about losing the Boston College game was the first time was we should have had a whole week off. You know, we could have probably taken a couple days off. But um, I don't really typically like doing that. So Wednesday will just be a light day. Coach, have you coached in the Carrier Dome before? And – what challenge this is the first opponent you you're seeing for a double time uh, a second time this season what type of challenge does that present well i've never uh no i've never been to syracuse um i mean i have an unbelievable amount of respect for their program um the first time i ever laid eyes on syracuse i was in high school i think i was a freshman when iowa made a run to the lead eight in 1980 and they beat um louis the louis and Bowie show roosevelt Bowie and louis Orr. In 1980, um, Tony Bruin, all those guys, great players. I, I've never been up there. I'm looking forward to it. Um, you know, we're going to have to obviously be ready to, to attack the zone. I'm sure they're going to adjust to the way we attack them. And so we'll have to put some new wrinkles in. You got to make shots. You got to guard those guys. And um, it's always a little bit more of a chess, chess match the second time around. 
But heck, when I was in Northwest Florida, we played each team in the league three times. And so um, I'm used to that. Does anyone uh, have anything else for coach? All right. Thanks, coach. All right, guys. Thanks. My bad. My bad. I was talking to Damari. <laughs> All right. We have Alondis Williams and we'll open the floor to questions. So, Londis, what did you say to Damari? I'm, I'm one for six from the field today. Does that mean he'll slow down on the trigger uh, Saturday? Man, he man, he been looking good. So, you know, we happy to have him back. You know, a little, another shooter out there. You know, I could throw the ball, get my assist. Nah, but you know, we 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 probably to have him back. He been you know doing what he can do uh, to be you know come off the bench. So we got more fire firepower. Alondis, what was the feeling for this one tonight? Uh, it looked like it was a little bit of a slow start for the first five minutes, and then it didn't take much for you guys to click into gear. Is that the way it felt? Um, I don't know. Every time we come in the locker room, you know, the locker room be kind of cold. So you know, our legs be kind of be kind of uh, you know dead. So we be, we be coming out there kind of slow sometimes. But you know, as soon as we get a couple runs up and down, we be good to go. So I think that means you should just stay on the court for like the forty-five minutes leading up to the game, then, right? Yeah, facts. <laughs> Alondis, I guess what was the mindset on this one in terms of you guys coming off the big win Saturday against UNC, emotional win, packed crowd. Today, obviously, you didn't have quite that crowd, nor the in-state rival. What did you all do to, to get the juices flowing and to, to, and to do the things that you need to do to get this win? Um, we, just, we just had – coaches kept on telling us to stay focused, you know, um, no team, no take no team lightly, you know. Uh, we got off our feet for a little bit uh, one day. Um, but the main part is just really just stay focused, stay locked in, don't take them lightly, you know, because, you know, anybody can do something in this league. So we just kept our foot in the gas. Is that easy to have happen when you got a starting lineup that essentially has, you know, four seniors? You, you guys have a lot of experience in that starting five. Yeah, it's it's good to have a lot of experience. So, you know, um, everybody know and been through everything, you know, been through the ups and the downs, you know, so we used to it. Alana, well, how are you guys handle how are you guys handling the expectation level now? Because, you know, you guys are in the upper echelon of the ACC and how do you handle all that? Uh, we just take it uh, day by day, you know, just keep on focusing on practice, getting better every day and, and executing what we got to do every day you know, till, until we reach that point. So we've, we've, we've been doing real good with that. Londis, what was the reason for how good y'all played defense tonight? You said what? What was the driving factor in how well you played defense? Um, it was good that we played defense, you know, because, you know, in the beginning of the um, conference play, you know, we was kind of slacking in defense. So, you know, we just had to pick it up and get better at it so we can keep executing our wins, you know, getting bigger leagues and all that. So I like our defense today. You know, we do a lot of ice now, so it's cool. Alondis, how much of an uh, emphasis have you guys put on that, getting better defensively? Um, Coach, get a, he get mad at us every day in practice about it. So it's stuck in our head now. Um, he always calling us a week if we if we get uh, drove him by our, um, our defender every time. So. You know, in our mind, we just were like, man, we can't let this, you know, let this person go by us, um, beat us on the drive over time, all the time. And, you know, you don't want to get a bad look on TV like that either. So, you know, we just all be locked in together. We tell each other we got each other backs and, you know, defense just get better and better every day. Man, man, is this some of the most fun you've had playing basketball in your entire life with this team? What is that? <laughs> I said, is this is this some of the most fun you've had playing basketball, like playing with this team in, on this winning streak? Um, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. A lot of fun. You know, we got a lot of um, good guys on this team. You know, we got a lot of personality, you know, a lot of goofballs on this team. So it's kind of fun playing with them. You know, we ain't got no selfish people. You know, selfish people kind of could bring teams down, but we ain't got none of that. So it's it, it been kind of fun playing with them. Alondis, did you hear the uh, the students chanting MVP at you Saturday? And, and if so, what were your thoughts when you heard that? 
Yeah, I heard, I heard it. You know, it just felt like I was playing um uh, 2K. You know, when my mom player be on the free throw line, they be saying MVP. You know, I kind of felt like that I was kind of you know surprised they were saying that, but I really appreciate it though. Anything else for Alondos? Okay, thanks, Alondos. Yeah.